right of number two, Lambda is your way. Just to say that I've received a number of items of correspondence. One, uh, not directly to this, but supporting our school in the era. Uh, one from the developer. There is a number of emails from councillors that wish to speak but are unable to because they're not listening to speak. It has been uh, explained to them about the constitution. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, just before you start there, yeah. it was remiss of me, I should have said at the start of the meeting, we do have Benson from the uh, Highway uh, Council Highways. Signalisation, 
with two pen crossings, a cycle paths and a footpaths to be provided, along with other works within the highway boundary, most obviously to the roundabout. It is important to state, however, that any approval of this proposal does not approve these works. However, an approval of this planning application will help to facilitate these works being carried out within the boundary of the highway. In regard to ecology and biodiversity, it is considered that with conditions which are recommended, that there will be no significantly adverse impact on ecology or biodiversity. The Council have received no objections, subject to conditions, from the Environment Agency, Warwickshire County Council Land Drainage Team, or Seven Tread Water. It is therefore considered that there will be no unacceptable harm caused by flooding as a result of the proposal. In regard to air quality, the Council's Environmental Health Officers have raised no objections in regard to this proposal impact on this. In regard to noise, the Council's Environmental Health Officers have raised no objection. Um, the contaminated land conditions are listed on the agenda, and with these in place it is considered that there will be no significant harm caused by the proposal or any potential currently contaminated land. In regard to planning obligations, the highway's contributions have been requested as listed above and on the agenda. <coughs> the exact amount is still being negotiated with the applicant, although this is accepted that something will have to be given um, in principle. Um, um, the exact amount of education contributions is also still being negotiated with the applicant, but again accepted in principle. The library's request could not be is not considered to be still compliant, and as, as such the, the request is not uh, made. The NHS requests are also not considered to be still compliant, since there again is ambiguity of the exact nature and extent of the capacity of the Grange Medical Centre nearby. Warwickshire County Council footpaths team have requested um, some monies which have been okay by the applicant and will be entered into the agreement. Uh, the plain open space contributions made by this council again agreed in principle, although the final amount is still up for negotiation. The recommendation is therefore one of approval, subject to a legal agreement, since the succession has shown on balance the positive aspects of the proposal outweigh the limited impact of, of the scheme. The recommended approval and conditions and legal agreement are set out in the agenda. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I'd like to highlight a few things. Obviously, we do need houses around the borough, and we do need houses and affordable houses in Wellington and St Nicholas. But we have previously approved 1,400 homes in Wellington and St Nicholas without any provision yet coming online for schools or general practice. And it's noticeable when you look in the annex to this, we're going to spend, well, the developer's going to spend almost £2 million. Pounds. If you look on page 37, because there's no primary schools, no preschool, no secondary school, no post-16. There is no capacity in the area with all the other 1,400 homes being developed for any provision for any other people on this site. Uh, and this application is premature because we've got vast amounts of housing being approved and no provision for GPs and schools, etc. So we've got a massive imbalance. And it would be wrong to say that this will actually help with our five-year house supply because in the area they're building 50 houses a year. 1,400 houses approved, 50 a year is 28 years to build. If you built at four times the rate, if the developers could build 200 houses a year, it still takes seven years to build the houses that have already got permission. And we haven't got a school. Horston Grange was built without a school, a primary school. The 1,400 we've got approved already in Wednesday St Nick's, nowhere's going ahead yet with building the primary school. And I say we've got £2 million of money here, but not a location for the school. So we should be waiting for this type of application and looking at where and if this land needs to actually provide land for a school. Likewise, there's issues over highways and flooding. The highways issue, when you convert that roundabout to a major set of traffic lights, it then loses the ability from St Nicholas Park for people to actually go to the roundabout and turn back. This evening, I went round that roundabout to get into town because you cannot turn right out of St Nicholas Park. There'll be four sets of traffic lights as part of these proposals, three on the East River Way and one on St Nicholas Park Drive. It all actually needs proper planning. 
because what will happen is we will get a mess, we'll get a building site for seven years while this is built, and although there's going to be cycling routes through this development, there's not enough space past that traffic lights for people to cycle by it for the seven years while this development's going on. As I say, we've approved more than enough in this area, and you will not build one more house by approving this. All you'll do is build a house here rather than a house on one of the other developments. And we'll end up with a vast number of partly built developments. It is really frightening that this is going ahead so quickly. And the issues like the flooding, this land is full of water in winter. It is not flood zone because it's not the rivers rising. It is the clay holding the water from the winter rainfalls. And anyone who's driven past that site in a rainy winter will have seen standing water on that site. We need to actually have a pause, get the borough planning in place, get the community infrastructure in place, and work out what we need to build. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No? John Evans. I think you called me councillor, Mr. Chairman, I'm afraid I'm profoundly deaf. Did you call? Yes. yes. John, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Evans. Uh, Mr Chairman, members of the committee, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that Eastborough Way is an integral part of one of the busiest road systems in the borough. It's used by through traffic and local commuters to access the A5 and the Heap and Bedworth town centres and the M6 and Coventry. If we for the moment set aside the morning and evening rush hours, the absence of any significant development on the eastern side of Eastborough Way combined with filtered slip road access onto Horston Grange and Hemsdale Business Park, has provided for most road users a reasonably free-flowing and safe road traffic environment. However, over the years, the volume of locally generated commuter and through traffic has increased. Now, during the morning and evening rush hours, access to and from Horston Grange has become considerably more difficult. Drivers wishing to turn onto Eastbourne Way from Campbell Drive are faced with increased volumes of through traffic and additional traffic queuing in the filtered slip lanes waiting to access into Horston Grange. This is leading to significant delays and tailbacks, increasing the numbers of near misses and minor shunt incidents. The revised application before this committee proposes the construction of two new access roads directly opposite the access roads, roads to Horston Grange. Directly opposite. This, if implemented, simply compounds the difficulties faced by drivers wishing to enter or leave Horston Grange or the proposed new development. Removing the vital slip road access into Horston Grange, which this proposal will do, and creating two uncontrolled crossroads on Eastbrook Way, all in the space of approximately 150 metres, may serve the interest of the developer, but it does very little to serve the interest of road users. In the foreseeable future, the volume of road traffic on Eastbrook Way can only increase. And I hope the Planning Committee's decision can reflect this fact. I would urge this committee to consider that the congestion and related hazard resulting from an additional three to five hundred rush hour traffic movements onto Eastborough Way are sufficient grounds to refuse this planning application as it stands, at the very least until such time as the developer can propose an alternative, less disruptive access scheme, and one that restores the slip road access into Horston Grange. That is vital. Thank you. That's my three minutes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And uh, are there any points of clarification? No? <coughs> Councillor Trump. Before I start, uh, Mr. Chairman, well, um, can, I don't can I start at three minutes start when you start? Uh, oh, can, can you reset it and I'll start now, thank you. Mm. Uh, I was just going to ask if this could be put up if the officers have got it because it might have been beneficial, but we're here again considering another large-scale development of housing on Greenfields on the east side of the league. 
And normally the justification that's put forward for these uh, plans being approved is twofold. Um, one, because they're in the orange areas here on the preferred options plan, which is in the draft borough plan that's been put forward. And it typically says in the report to planning that although it's not law, although it's not been formally adopted, significant weight should be given to the fact that these areas are marked orange and so development applications there should be accepted. But this time it's different. It's not in one of those orange areas off the long shoot or in Wellington. It's in the green area, the area that the Labour Borough Council has coloured in green because they've pledged to make that green belt land. And now they're considering an application at the first opportunity to build houses on it. Clearly, that's double standards. If we're supposed to give significant weight to the uh, emerging borough plan to build houses, clearly we should give significant weight if it says it's an area where houses shouldn't be built. That's only fair. The other justification that's provided is the five-year housing supply and the supply of affordable houses in particular, the 150 that the borough needs across you know, all areas of Nuneaton and Bedworth every year. Well, as has been pointed out earlier, we've been approving development after development and after development. And it, it may have been credible to say early on, very optimistically, that if we approve these first few developments, yes, some houses will be built in the next few years, might even get a few affordable houses as well. But the hard evidence and facts on the ground is that despite numerous applications, only a few developments have started. They've only been built to a fractional extent. A relative handful of new homes have been produced and, and, and no meaningful affordable homes. You could approve this uh, application and a hundred more like it, a thousand more like it. However many you approve, it won't produce any more houses in the near term. Builders are not stupid. They only build houses as quickly as they can sell them for the price they want. And they typically build the bigger, more profitable houses first, with the affordable houses left to the very end. So, as on previous applications, many uh, councillors have already heard from officers, it will be some years before any of these developments are started in a meaningful way, many years more before a meaningful number of houses are built, and years after that, before any affordable houses are completed, let alone the hundreds that have already been approved. So it does not stand objective scrutiny to approve more affordable housing or more housing now in this part of Nuneaton, which is saturated, as we've already heard, and more applications being approved here won't result thank in you more you housing. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? Yes, Councillor Bell. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to read out a statement on behalf of Laurie Lane, Planning Manager of Gladwin Developments, who is unfortunately able, unable to attend this afternoon as he's currently giving evidence at a planning inquiry. I'd like to start by stating that Gladwin fully endorses the professional officer's positive recommendation for the scheme and are grateful for the positive uh, approach of the officers during the consideration of this application. I'd like to draw your attention to three key considerations of the proposal before you. Firstly, with regard to landscape, the area of restraint policy is in the extant local plan has been confirmed as out of date by planning inspectors at appeal. The findings of the submitted landscape and visual impact assessment demonstrate that the proposed scheme can be accommodated without any unacceptable adverse impact on the landscape, which has been ratified by your professional officers. Secondly, I note that the site is the subject of the proposed Greenbelt designation in the Emerging Borough Plan. However, this has not yet been the subject of any formal testing at examination in public. It is our view that the Emerging designation does not fulfil the five Greenbelt purposes as set out in national guidance. Whilst Greenbelt is a national de not a landscape designation, the Council's TEP assessment also confirms that the Greenbelt designation is not suitable in this location. Thirdly, there are various highways benefits of this scheme. The County Council have confirmed that the long shoots in East Borough Way and the existing roundabout junction do not have the capacity for any additional development in the borough. The application site will therefore provide the land essential for the provision of a comprehensive highway scheme which will relieve the severe traffic problems currently being experienced. Fair and proportionate contributions are to be pulled with existing consent schemes. This includes the widening of the long shoot in East Borough Way 
a new signalised junction to replace the roundabout and signalised junctions for both site accesses. This will benefit existing users of Camborne Drive and the Horse and Grain Shopping Centre who struggle to turn onto Eatsborough Way at peak times. It should be noted that whilst the scheme will address an existing highway problem, the proposed land and road scheme will deliver additional capacity necessary to support the delivery of a northeastern urban extension proposed in the emerging local plan should this be taken forward. Finally, there are no technical concerns outstanding or matters of principle which would indicate permission should be restricted. The proposed market and affordable housing would make a valuable contribution towards helping to address the Council's housing and land supply position. I would respectfully ask the committee to follow your professional officer's advice and approve the scheme. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? Councillor Foster. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Ingram, um, I have two questions for the Chair, please. Um, the, high, the County Council highways actually did turn down or raise objections to this plan when it first came to light. No? I think they raised an objection to begin with, yes. And the provision of monies, which you are doing now, is what changed their mind effectively. I mean, <coughs> and which, which is a mitigation, but in fact, is in, including a mitigation to make the traffic flows better, actually increases volumes of, of, of traffic to make it even worse. Yeah. So there is a conflict there. I, I'm, I'm reading can the same. Can I just stop you there? I'm happy if you want to answer it, but I'm going to point out that I don't okay. think... I don't, I'll, I'll raise this. No, yes. Councillor Foster, I'm, I don't think that arose from anything that the gentleman said in his three minutes. So it's not a point of clarification. If he wants to answer it, I'm happy to do so. But it might be one that you want to ask the highway person during the debate. Thank you, Chair. It, it, it's up to you whether you want to make any reference to it. I was just going to say, yeah, the highway's officer is here, the funny officer is here to answer the question. Are there any other questions? Councillor Humphrey. Thank you, Chair. Um, you briefly mentioned how any road improvements are going to be financed. Could you give some more detail? It could well be another question for the highways officer and the planning officer, but it's just uh, we'd obviously pay the contributions that are agreed with the, with the council for the section 106 agreement. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, you said in your statement there that uh, you're going to give uh, some of the land to the highways to make the highway system wider. Uh, looking at the drawings, uh, I can't see. Uh, where the space is being provided. Uh, I'm, I'm basically thinking about uh, the cycle paths that are, are mentioned, but not marked on the drawing. <coughs> and when you say you'd be giving some additional space to the highway, will that be sufficient to follow the, the highway guidance for, for cycle paths adjacent to a highway? Um, in answer to your first point, um, I think that the areas are marked on black and on the development framework plan, which is part of your pack, which shows where the land will be giving over. Um, uh, and then, um, I believe, yeah, also the two conditions in the planning application, which will make sure that we are part the development framework plan, which provides for the cycle ways. It's not really answering my question, because... Well, I want to be clear, will there be sufficient space? The drawing doesn't, doesn't make that very clear. Again, it might be one drawing you made to give them a Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready then? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other points of clarification? No. Then, to enable the debate to take place, can I move the recommendation as printed on the agenda? Is that second? Yeah. Second, yeah. Uh, I want to go back to the configurations of the report. Uh, if the, um, in terms of the, the, the um, finance associated with it, but if that finance is said not to be, will not enable any um, highways as proposed by the developers to actually come to fruition 
because they are making a contribution. So I just would like to find out whether or not um, the development going through, how would the entire new roadway road layout that's proposed, how would that become fulfilled? And do we have the finance to enable that to happen if we, that is not a full 100% contribution from the developers? We negotiated and secured financial contributions from the developments along the long sheet, which have either been approved or you've minded to approve and now they're subject to negotiate. That, would, that is the same for this application, that if you're minded to approve it, will be subject to a financial contribution being paid to it. When we get those financial contributions, we pass them on to the county council. When the county council are happy that we've got enough money to do the scheme, then that's what will happen. Sure, thanks. Uh, I think that's a, a, a sort of almost the uh, explanation. Um, I do not know whether the highways would like to add anything else in terms of citizen, um, making sure that if this happens before we have the full um, what is it good to have the highways develop? What and how will you manage the emerging traffic? Um, <coughs> just for another point of application to start from the beginning, when the actual original application was submitted, the applicants were proposing three priority junction accesses and no improvements to the roundabout junction. That's why the Highway Authority objected. The Highway Authority had identified this scheme as a potential solution on the long shoot. So it's actually a scheme that, the preliminary scheme that the Highway Authority was, had identified as needed and had a preliminary plan which is sort of gave to the developer to overcome, to try and resolve some of the issues to do with the highway network. So we have a plan, that's it up there, and that's what is the scheme that the money is being attributed to. Um, just building on section 106, which we technically now, we, if you're mind to approve this application, we have the five pots to, uh, under the section 106 obligations, to secure the implementation of that scheme. But that is when the scheme is delivered. And obviously, the trigger points are, uh, are agreed during the section 106 negotiation process, which will be led by the Needham and Bedworth officers. So, my last question, please. Will, and the modeling that you've, you've done, will that modeling has that model been shown to be able to take the new capacity that will emerge from the combined um, builds that are happening along, around the long term? Yes, uh, the modelling that's been undertaken includes all the existing committee development and has been undertaken in a, a future year reference case of 2025, so that's 10 years from today. And that's presented on the, that's when we believe the whole development could be built out in, in that period, a 10 year period. Based on the existing uh, traffic flows that we have, it's demonstrating that that junction, compared to the roundabout, will have significant spare capacity. For example, at the moment in the reference case in 2025, with the roundabout in operation, the maximum queue lengths along the long shoot would be 50 vehicles. With the implementation of the, uh, the signalised scheme, that is reduced to seven. So the signals provide a huge amount of capacity because it can regulate the amount of traffic that's operating through it, rather than the roundabout, which is based on priority, um, which means that it all moves to the right hand priority, we all know the drivers, um, which means that the long shoot can't clear itself out, this way can't clear itself out, and it's the issue of the signal sent it with half drive. The other benefit of having the signal access is it provides access for pedestrians and uh, cyclists, because it's a two-punt in terms of pedestrian crossing, so it can cross all over, all over the junction. Um, safely on set stages for those, for those movements, but that enables to have space to allow right turners out to St Nicholas Park Drive as well. And we've seen the level of delay and queue at St Nicholas Park Drive also diminish through the implementation of the signals to the modern network. Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Thank you. 
traffic and the flow of that roundabout or the other end of Eastborough Way as well and those other vertical roundabouts. Um, my second question is about the flooding issue. Um, I did notice on page 34, it says the environment agency was in 2015 with no objections with them and the main river flooding and the flood zones. But I've noticed, as Councillor Contecourt said, that you do actually get surface water in the winter. And I was wondering what work has been done, what assessments have been done regarding surface water um, and whether, best where would that water go? If there are houses on there, what kind of go somewhere, isn't there? So what work has been done for there? And my third concern, again, is about infrastructure. Um, if there's 30 houses, that's what, 600 to 900 people, something like that. Um, presumably that's 200 kids going to go to school somewhere. Um, I was wondering what work has been done with general infrastructure. So they're my three main concerns, so we can take them. I must beg you to address the highway part of it. I think the other two issues are for our officers. Thank you, Chair. Um, the, the, site, the site has been modelled through the Nuneaton Strategic Transport Model, which is the same model which has been used to assess the local emerging local plan, basically. So it includes a large net, the network of Nuneaton, basically, and it assesses the impact of that development across the whole of that network. In terms of that modelling as well, the, the proposed signalised crossroads have been included in that modelling. Um, they're included as well, as well as the Bellway signalised access as well, because that's now committed. So they, they all have been uh, factored in, and the network works much better than it does existingly. And as I discussed last time when we talked about the long shoot, it's because the signal the signal control crossroads will be linked to the, uh, the Hinkley Road, Eastbury Way, Long Shoot Junction, and they will regulate between themselves and won't let an um, excessive number of vehicles build back up into the next junction. So they'll work on a system called Mover, and they will link together and uh, interact with one another as well. In terms of the signalised crossroads, they will have clear stages for each of those accesses to empty out onto the network and control the east, east, east of way traffic basically to now allow a safer access out for those. So they'll get greater opportunity for exiting out of Cable Drive and the site um, with the signals controlling those traffic flows. So it's, much, it's very much about platooning traffic, controlling the flow of traffic in an organised manner. At the moment it's all priority based and it's down on drivers to make the decision on when they have to take uh, and make, see a gap to go. At the moment, you have highway safety concerns, to be honest with you, cable drive because of the speed of traffic coming along each way and people trying to get out in small gaps. The, the benefit of the signals is it regulates all that, it keeps traffic speeds low. The modeling has demonstrated that traffic speeds come down as well on each way. So the actual scheme itself provides a lot of benefit. Um, when we've assessed it, and in terms of what we can ask the developers to reasonably provide in terms of mitigation, we have to look at the primary impact. This is what's demonstrated here is the primary impact on the network. Yes, they do have secondary impacts, but the, the actual impact is negligible and it doesn't we wouldn't be able to reasonably ask for contributions based on the guidance that we have from the government. Okay, thanks, Ben. Over to us on the other side. In respect of the land drainage um, issue, we consulted with the Morris County Council land drainage team. Um, they requested a condition to be placed on the approval, which is on there. I believe it's condition 10 on the agenda. Um, I can show you the, the site plan as well. There is also, it's quite small, but you can probably see it, um, drainage pond is shown on the plan, um, which would help to mitigate some of the surface water in the pool, um, being for the lowest part of the site. Um, but essentially, we've consulted with the county council. There are experts, basically, in land drainage. They've said they're, they're happy as long as that condition is okay. And with regards to education, all applications, the County Council as Education Authority have consulted on all applications. <coughs> it's up to them to say whether they consider, they know what, exactly what developments we've dealt with already. It's up to them to say, actually, we need now need somewhere for a new school or, or whatever. At the moment, they're saying this development could go ahead. We know of the other development with a contribution to the education facilities at the nearby schools. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, <coughs> well, Chair, in 
in relation to schools, of course, uh, catchment areas move and uh, as a result of developments. And uh, whilst it is true that Austin Grange and the primary school, uh, the children from there probably go to the three primary schools that are situated just across the, the other side of the road. So um, uh, obviously there will be some shift and it could well be that the county council come back uh, finally to say when these developments are finished that we may need another primary school. Uh, in secondary, because of the spread of academies in New Eden, people choose to go where they like now, and so they, they're all over the, the borough. Um, in relation to this particular development, if there are traffic lights, I'm not too worried, Chairman, about that aspect, because Tuttle Hill, which is about that thing, used to have no traffic lights. And three lots of traffic lights now go up Tuttle Hill. The traffic moves very quickly. It doesn't, it does slow down the speed, and we do have a problem with speeding drivers along Eastboro Way. And although I don't live there, I did actually work there for 30 years, and I know it's, it, the problems of Foster and Grange getting in and out, the problems getting in and out of the uh, top of St Nicholas Park Drive for those people who don't want to turn left, go around the island and come back. Uh, so um, I think that the traffic situation will actually be made better by this. And at the end of the day, Chair, uh, in relation to these houses, not everybody comes out of the house all at the same time and goes back in the house all at the same time. So it's obviously a staggered movement of people. And that will obviously happen, but the traffic light situation should help. Just want to make one last point, Chair. It was implied earlier on that there are political decisions on planning applications. By law, we are not allowed to meet as political parties and discuss any individual planning application. We can't have any pre-meetings, neither can we take a party line. And every single member of the planning committee has to sit and make that judgment on what is presented to them at the committee. just want to make that clear because it was implied otherwise earlier in the chair. Suggestions along that lines, then I would welcome the person that said it is to uh, go through the formal channels and, and make that because Councillor Harvey is exactly right, there's no good meets or gets booked on planning um, applications. Thank you, yes, uh, it's still really on the, on the highways issue, but more on the financial side of it. Um, if we're convinced that the scheme is um, detailed, is going to be successful, uh, that's one thing, but I'm, I need a bit more information to enable me to make a decision about how it's going to be financed. I understand that the applicant and the other um, developers further down the long shoot are all going to make a contribution and there's negotiations going on. Um, what happens if, is this a possible outcome, if the result of the negotiations is, well, we'll stump up this much, but these so many tens of thousands of pounds will have to come from somewhere else, and that somewhere else can't pay. Or, I also understand, I think, reading between the lines, that this scheme isn't all going to be implemented at once in terms of highways, and that um, perhaps it depends on how quickly the developments go ahead. <coughs> And that is going to sort of determine when the finance becomes available. Uh, how does that work over what could be a 10 year period with developers perhaps, you know, um, getting bought up and that sort of thing? It's a big question. <laughs> no, you're correct. All the developments will pay a contribution. Yes, it would be a lot easier if it was all one development, one legal agreement, one commission, and we could negotiate it all uh, on one go. So we're trying to negotiate it on several applications um, and trying to uh, get what's best on, on the highway scheme. So, yes, there is a possibility that not all the monies will come together or uh, close to each other uh, to enable the highway works to be done. <coughs> Does that answer the question? 
but, oh, now the other part of the question, but all the contributions requested should cover the cost of the works. And that's why it's fit into, into different um, elements of work, so that we can request contributions to, to those elements separately. So I take from that that the negotiations will produce sufficient uh, finance for the scheme to go ahead as detailed. Yes. The uh, phasing of it could be problematic in certain points. The phasing is always included into the legal agreement. We're well aware as officers that the, the highways schemes are more important than some of the other contributions. And so we always, if you like, front load that bit of the uh, Section 106 agreement to pay those monies over first, if you like. So that whilst there will always be a trigger point to the various con contributions, we are well aware that the highways one should come further up the list and so on. Um, just so that members are aware, the, the signal and crossway junctions will be delivered under Section 278 agreement under the Highways Act. They're the, they're the developer's responsibility to deliver, basically, because that's their point of access onto the network. So if they want to build out their site, they have to provide those accesses. One of the accesses has to go in before built construction, remediation or groundwork to provide a safe construction access onto East Way because once again we have highway safety concerns if it was just a temporary party access. As they build out the site, there's a trigger point for the second uh, signalised access to be implemented as well to accommodate the, the housing that's been built, also the construction traffic as well. And those are under section 278 agreements which will be dealt with under the Highways Act if you're minded to give approval. The section 106 contributions is solely for your Sorry, I don't want to voice it. Solely pure, uh, for, yeah, solely pure for, um, still can't do it, um, the roundabout junction and for that to be fully signalised, basically, as on, based on the plan that you've seen this evening. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I've got to three, perhaps four points. First, highways. I'd like to say I'm very impressed with your optimism about traffic control by junctions. Uh, We've got one particular light junction in the and that's horrendous because the phasing never seems to be quite right. So we end up with huge queues. As my colleague, Councillor Harvey, said, the, the lights on Tuttle Hill, yeah, don't cause any problems. But the ones at Abbey Green, wow, there's always a queue there. There'll be a queue there now, I'm sure, uh, purely because of phasing. This particular road piece of network, uh, I've been a mile and a half from the long shoot lights in a traffic queue. No, no accidents, no buses, no broken down vehicles, just the traffic light phasing was wrong. I hope it's only temporarily, it doesn't occur every day. Okay, uh, <coughs> back to the, the 106 and uh, your, your statement that there isn't any safety issues from the highways background. Uh, most people behind me here will know that I do a lot of cycling. I cycle down this route on a regular basis and it always scares me. The road narrowings to the junctions on Horston Grange, the pedestrian refuges, they're a, a potential fatality for a cyclist. Uh, to increase them by putting uh, extra traffic onto those roads, therefore the likelihood of meeting another vehicle in that road narrowing just increases my likelihood. I feel like I've got a raffle ticket you know, uh, every time. I, I love to have eyes in the back of my head. So I think there are road safety issues because of the road narrowings. Um, signalised uh, signalisation of roundabouts. <coughs> Again, on the plans, I can't see if there's any advanced stop lines being uh, drawn into the plans. Is, is that correct or not, please? Um, to deal with your first questions is that we've spoken at length with the cycling officer at the County Council and SUSTRANS who are supporting us in development of a comprehensive cycle strategy for Nuneaton. Um, both of them have identified that the existing arrangement at East Broadway Roundabout is dangerous for cyclists, basically. Um, and they have therefore worked with us on the signalised uh, junction improvements. Either the developers are providing us with the land so we can widen carriageway slightly, but also can provide the three metre off, off uh, carriageway cycle route through that. So those cyclists who don't want to cycle on the carriageway have a safe off-road, off-carriageway option. 
In traffic from the development, yes, it does increase it, but not by a lot. The existing traffic flows themselves are already quite significant in that area, and the way the roundabout operates creates, creates that safety issue. The benefit with the signals is that we're mitigating that impact and providing a safer option by providing the off-site, off-carryway facility with the two crossings through the junction. I take on the point that on the drive at the moment it's very difficult to see if there are forward stopping lines for cyclists. As I said, it's in the preliminary, it's got to go through further technical improvement and development, and it's something I can take back uh, when, as we, uh, if you're minded to approve it when we're drawing up the scheme. Thank you. I'm Density of building 30 houses per hectare. 
Generally speaking, most developments are built between 30 and 50 hectares. In fact, the old planning guidance that we used to have suggested that we should always have developments of 30 to 50 hectares. So, whilst it says high development on one of the developments, and there will be areas within the development where there will be some higher density than, than others, but overall, 330 on the 11 point whatever it is hectares isn't over this. But it is a concern of some of the residents and that, that has been put on the agenda. And, uh, 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 and in fairness, depending on what happens to it tonight, it's only an outline application. And it, it is, but it is for up to 330. I was going to say the words are up to 330. <laughs> Thanks for long. Oh. Chairman sitting here waiting and waiting patiently for somebody to uh, can, can actually get to a point where I can say I'm happy with this application. That hasn't happened. Uh, nothing that I've heard so far has commended this uh, application to me. Uh, there seems to be some side footing going on and everything else. And in fact, I think. Uh, the fact that this is going to be in Martha's Greenbelt uh, really does uh, stick in my craw because going through uh, the traumas that we've had with the Borough Plan and in uh, specific sites, uh, it really now comes uh, to fruition, doesn't it? Uh, and I think this application is somewhat opportunistic, if not cynical, uh, an attempt by the developer to put a foothold on this piece of land uh, prior to the Borough Plan uh, being approved, if it gets approved, by the Government Minister. I can't find, I don't believe there's any mitigating factors that's strong enough to actually allow development on this piece of green field. I do not believe that that, is, uh, that has been uh, looked at properly uh, and I can't see anything significant in that that warrants the, the, the to this, uh, this application should be approved. And there's lots of things going on in my head with this. If this does get approved, then the whole structure around that particular area where the uh, first round of the Borough Plan highlighted where buildings or where development could take place now increases significantly. Um, and that then takes away other opportunities. Not only does it do that, it significantly makes a lot of difference to the environmental issues that we've got. Uh, it makes a lot of difference in terms of health provision, schooling, and many other factors uh, in, a, in and around this area. Uh, the environment uh, aspects of it are not good whatsoever. Uh, and I think, uh, well, I know, I will not. I will not be supporting this. I don't believe it is sustainable. It won't be sustainable in the future. And I don't think it should go ahead. I'm not going to move rejection at this point, Chair. Uh, but I'll see how it goes. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't uh, meet approval, then I'm happy to put my name to uh, a refusal. Mine's a fairly simple point, Chairman. Um, I've been married to a woman for 50 odd years who has spent most of her life refusing to have a pond in my back garden. Um, and here I am sitting at a plan with a significant area of drainage and a children's play area next to it. And I think if I went back home and told her I hadn't spoken, uh, I would be in some trouble. So the question really is, that looks like a significant drain off there. Uh, there's a pond in the middle of it, and there's a children's play area right next to it. And I'm just wondering about the safety standards of engineers and uh, water people who, uh, who look at these things. Um, what they apply to decide that it is safe indeed to do what this plan indicates. Thank you. The layout as shown here is just indicative because it is an outline application. So they're showing that there is space on the site to provide an area for play 
and a drainage pond and the highways that go around the site and the houses and so on. Um, they're not set in stone because it is an outline application and they act to reserve matter, which if approved will deal with it at a later stage. Thank you. Okay. Is there any member not already spoken that wishes to? So thank you, thank you for allowing me to come back in. So um, on the panel of um, obligations, um, there's a, a, quite a considerable amount of contributions being asked for. But two that I'm, I'm concerned about, um, libraries and NHS, are, are not still compiled. Yeah. Could you could that be explained, please? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just going to just finish. I'm looking at... Because I'm looking at the infrastructure, I'm looking at ground liberty, yeah. I'm looking at the population explosion, yeah. and having declared earlier my, my um, yes. you know, I'm really considering that are we making sufficient um, uh, 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 structures to enable people to live okay. in, a, in a comfortable way? The question is why it's not considered to be yeah. simple. Uh, for libraries, they still ask for the contribution based on tariff. Basis. So they say, right, well, it's going to be 330 houses, there should be so much per house. It's clear in the legislation and the guidance that the government have issued recently, and that's been in place since this April, that you can't ask for contributions on a tariff basis. Work has been undertaken with the county council officers, uh, particularly those in libraries, to suggest that they do it in a different way. If they do it in a different way, we're more than happy to negotiate for contributions towards libraries. Similar story with the NHS property people. They also, they don't necessarily ask for it on a tariff basis, but they aren't able at this present time to give us enough information about how an extra 330 dwellings would add to the need to start with. So what that actually means physically for NHS services, an extra 330. And because they're not able to do that, we're not able to say that it's directly relevant to the development. And if we can't say that, then it doesn't become certain edge. Okay, thank you. It's been moved and seconded the recommendation as printed, which is approval subject to conditions and the legal agreement. All those in favour of that? Yes. Yeah.